Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted to change your mindset about wealth, success, and significance, then do we have the Unlock It show for you. Today I'll be talking with Dan Locke, best-selling author, multi-millionaire, serial entrepreneur, that is, and the author of Unlock It. And that's just what I want to talk with him about today, about the master key to wealth, success, and significance. That plus we'll talk about Iron Man collections, the way of the dragon, gotcha, the power of Zhang Tian, a happy wife, a happy life, a million dollar year, the importance of a money tree, and the what in the world golden money guns have to do with anything. So welcome to the show, Dan. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Woohoo! Woohoo! Awesome. So before we dive right into things, where'd you first grow up? I was born in Hong Kong mm -hmm. and I immigrated to Vancouver, Canada when I was 14 years old. And so I'm essentially like, it's like Chinese, but Chinese Canadian. I, I, I totally get that. We have that in the family as well. Did you speak much English at the time? And what were the other kids like when you arrived at 14? Uh, no, I, I wish so. Even though uh, Hong Kong is supposed to learn some basic English, but I was just a, a horrible student. So, oh, so no. I, except like, how are you? That's, that's all I know. That's my, my English. That's it. So when I first immigrated to, to Vancouver, mm -hmm. I couldn't speak a word of English. So, and I didn't know anybody and, and it was, I didn't know there was, didn't have any friends and also had, had no money. And so my mom and I moved to Vancouver. And then shortly after that, when I was 16 years old, then my, my mom and dad actually got divorced. Uh, they were having marriage problems for many, many years, mm -hmm. but it's after that we immigrated, then they've decided that they don't want to stay together anymore. And, and then at the age of 17, uh, my dad was a businessman. He was into international trade and he had a partner at the time, basically took his money and disappeared. And oh, my wow. dad was the one who signs all the dots and was the guarantor for everything. And that left him about a million dollars US in debt. And that wiped, wiped him out uh, financially, but also emotionally. And I saw that and I saw my dad. He was, he was never the same man again. He was never the same, same person. Like he never bounced back. From then on, he was just downhill from there for him. If we look at, I don't even know if we want to go on the spiritual significance of this, but I believe that everything in life happens for a reason. And we're all, we're all receiving steering and guidance. And I think that phone call, the day that you, you found your mom crying and that your dad was bankrupt, was yes. actually an exceptionally positive steering moment in your life. I, I agree. Uh, at the time, now at the time when I was young, I had a lot of resentment towards my dad. So after, so one day I came home to share the story. I came home, and at the time, my mom and I were living in in a one bedroom apartment. We were renting, and the door was closed because I was I was sleep in the living room. I had a sleeping bag, a bag, and then my mom would stay in in the in the bedroom. And I saw the door close, and I could hear roughly that my mom was talking to someone and i could i could hear kai, kai crying on the phone i was like okay was knocking the door so mom is everything okay and she's like oh no no it's okay and i'm just knocking is everything okay and then after she got off the phone she opened the door and she's been like just bawling her eyes out and i could see she would she looked very scared very scared very confused and she told me then that as the, the moment that she told me that my dad would just went like basically lost everything and because he was the, the only provider for the family. So my dad at the time was sending me allowance to go to school, to take care of the bills and pay the rent. And basically my mom was saying that your dad would not be able to send us any more money. And my mom has never worked a day in her life. She's like a, a housewife, yeah. always it's just been taking care of me as the only child. So at the time, I had a lot of anger, resentment towards my dad because like, why did you do this? It's like, why did you kind of leave us, just me and my mom and not taking care of us? You're not a good father. I had a lot of these thoughts in my mind. And so for a few years, I didn't talk to my dad. I actually didn't talk to him. So at the time, I had a little fax machine in my home. Yeah. So I wouldn't talk to him. So he would just send me faxes. He would write me long letters, apologizing and just sharing and, and asking me how I am. And I would never reply. He would just send me, keep sending me faxes, and I would I would collect them. I still have them in my in my library, and I just I couldn't I couldn't talk to him. 
But looking back, that was the greatest thing that's ever happened to me because because of that incident, I learned to be self-reliant, and that's why I'm so driven. Because now it's not healthy, though. I, I want to point out, but it was some kind of a motivation and feel、mm -hmm. that you know what you can't even count on your dad to take care of you. The only person you can count on is yourself. And you gotta take care of your family, and I gotta man up as a, as a man,、yeah. as a, as a son.、And、that's what I've learned. There's there's a、uh, a song from、uh, Johnny Cash, a country song, maybe 50 years ago or something. It's either、mm. called a boy or a guy named Sue. It's about、mm. a dad who's not there for his kids, so he names his、mm. boy a girl's name, so that he would have a rough and tough early existence and get really strong and self reliant. And、yes. and it turns out you started to get that. In fact, then you saw, if I get this right, Bruce、mm. Lee and the Way of the Dragon. Yes. So because I was in I was in high school now at the time, Michael, the the school I was going to in in Surrey, just for for your listeners, Surrey is kind of the hood in Vancouver. Okay, that's where the not so good neighborhood. Yeah. And so I was one I was one of the only three Chinese in my school. Okay. So when I went to school, they 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 just thought I was I, I couldn't speak a word of English. I talked funny, right? It was kind of very shy, very weird because I was afraid of, afraid of people, right? Because I couldn't communicate and people wouldn't like would understand what I was talking about. So I got bullied, I got beat up in school, and my mom didn't know though because I didn't want to tell, wouldn't want to make her worry about me. But I I was very scared to go to class. Like when I finish class, yeah. I had to make sure I leave about five to ten minutes early, because I cannot walk through the main hallway without getting being picked on. So I had to leave early, kind of like work my way out before all the other kids finish class. Every single day I had to do that. Now you have to understand: every day you're living in fear, right? I was living in fear. And one night I was watching TV. I remember it's cable TV, and with Turn of the Dragon, Way of the Dragon, Bruce Lee came on a monitor. And it was him. The story of him couldn't speak a word of English.、Yep. Went to Rome, was helping this restaurant owner, and was like kind of kicking ass. And and it, the the Chuck Norris Rome kind of the classic fighting scene, right? And he was、uh, he was the guy who just had this amazing ability and just kick ass and beat up all the bad bad guys, right? Instantly, Bruce Lee became my hero because I could resonate like. Oh, I couldn't speak one of English, and you're getting picked on. But I didn't have any martial art ability,、yeah. and so, so that from then on, I I got very passionate.、Uh, I joined a karate school, and and still today,、uh, I still practice martial art、uh, in my spare time. But I that's one of the the hobbies that I have. It, it changed my life dramatically from from the incident, and I'm a huge fan, huge fan of Bruce Lee. More so,、yeah. more so that I've actually studied under two of Bruce Lee's original students, Ted Wong. Sifu Tet Wong and also Joe Lewis. Awesome, awesome. It it speaks to confidence, something we're going to be talking about later. It also speaks to self reliance because you made a commitment at this time, a commitment to yourself, a commitment to your family. What was that commitment? Just to take care of them. That that to me, if I don't have success, if I don't have resources, I'm I will not be able to protect my family. Because when the day that I saw my mom crying, that's I said to myself, I don't ever want to see that again. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what I have to do. I don't want to. I don't want to see that expression of my mom ever again, no matter what. So at a young age, I was doing odd jobs, trying to do anything to make a living, to to just want to make some money. I don't want my mom to have to worry about paying the bills and do we have enough food to eat and. And all of that stuff, right? So that kind of ignited that fire within me,、mm -hmm. right? And that's why over the years, self reliant. That I, I, in my mind, not being successful equals not being able to survive. Yeah, that's how, how I make that connection, right?、Uh, and, and that's why I've been. But there's there's a certain part of the story is good and bad. Yeah,、um, and we we could get into it because first. My drive, my motive, because motives do matter. My motives was to provide for my mom, right, Michael? That's it. After that, my motives changed because now, as I'm, I'm making more money, becoming more "quote unquote" successful, right, at an early age, twenty somewhat years old. I was trying to 
prove people wrong. Because I was the kid in school that got bullied, right? I was the kid that no one paid attention to. I was the invisible kid. That in, in, like you would see, you and I would go through a semester in high school. I would sit in the very back of the classroom and I put on my hand. You and I go through a few semesters, you don't even know my name. You don't even know who I am. I was dead invisible, right? I had no friends. So as I was experiencing some success, the, the insecurity in me wanted to what? Show them wrong. Show them wrong. Like, let, let me show you, I'm, I'm smart, right? You bully who bully me, you guys, like, you know, I, I, I'm smart, right? I, I, can, I, can, I can make money, I can, I can be successful, and, and let me, the, let's me, let's see me see the car that I drive, right? All this stuff, right? And that was driving me. It's like, it's a feel, but it's like, you know, you can, you can power a car with diesel. That's not good for the environment. You can power a car with electricity, right? Both would go, both would power a car, but it's a very different type of fuel. So I would say for the first, let's say from 20 to 30 years old, I was the guy that was consumed by success. I mean, obsessed. Meaning, doesn't matter how much I have, I want more. And I, I didn't care because as long as I'm protecting my family. So I was the guy who would, I would say, like, grab all the chips on the table. Yeah. That it's, I, I want to win. I don't care, win at whatever cost. There's no win, there's no win-win, it's only win-lose. Is it either I win or, or you win? There's no, there's no win-win in my mind, right? So that was me at the first. I, I'm not proud to admit it, but that was me. Right when I was young and I was like brash and I was egotistical, I was you know, all this stuff. Right, I was remember I was the first when I saw a little bit of money. I was buying my friends like dinner, go out there, we hang out, we we party. Right, I, I would drop like a few thousand dollars a night, and I don't even drink. Right, I, I would pay for them for this, pay for them for that. But why? Because I was trying to buy friendship. I was trying to buy attention. I was trying to buy, uh, like, just like, do not to be alone, right? And as you know, if you need to spend money, like, friendship is not something you buy. It's something that you just you connect with people. But I didn't know because I was naive, right? I was very good at business, but the personal, like, the, you talk about the spiritual, the personal side, I was, I was horrible. What, horrible. what switched and was going back to Hong Kong, your dad, was that the seed for it? it well, it was not yet because one, one thing, because I was so driven. So as I was making more money, now I'm accumulating some, some money. Um, the, there was the, the story you talked about was when I went to Hong Kong and I was, now, now keep in mind, I, now, I haven't, I've, now I've been talking to my dad, but I haven't, haven't like, I've seen him a couple of times when I went back. Yeah. But in between, we don't, like, we don't see each other a lot. But now our relationship is very good, just so, so, just so we're clear. So after I, I mature, after we talk, and then I was talking to my dad like all the time on the phone, but because I was building my business, working busy, so I didn't have a lot of time to see him. But after I accumulate a certain amount of, of money, wealth, was in Hong Kong, he and I, we were walking on, on the kind of the downtown area uh, in, in Hong Kong. And now my, my dad, first of all, he's a very still, very traditional father like Asian father doesn't say I love you <laughs> like doesn't like you know what I mean he's like very like stern kind of dad like that's just I love Jessica's dad but he scares the hell out of me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that kind of like doesn't like very like it doesn't compliment like it doesn't that kind of thing right so my dad I walking down the street and I I told my dad hey dad you see to see that window there he said yeah yeah I said, that, that window see that window right there so yeah, and I said, "Give me your palm, give me your palm." I put a set of keys. I said, "Dad, that's my gift to you." Now I've never seen my dad cry. He was he was bawling like a baby. <laughs> okay, he looked at the unit, looked at me. He looked at the unit. He looked at me. And all he said was this. He put his hand on my shoulders like this, bawling, looking at me. And he said, let's go get lunch. That meant the world for me. 
He didn't say, that's awesome, son. That's no, because to him, because you can see that, that it's, a, it's a tears of joy, but also tears of guilt. Because he knew that I made it on my own, right? And he knew that like all the stuff that happened, but it's, it's a lot of emotions, right? But to him, it's like, let's go have lunch. I could see from his eyes, all, what it meant for him was, my son is, is good. He could take care of the mom. He could take care of like himself. Like, I don't have to worry anymore, right? It's not because the, the, I bought the place. Yeah. It's because of, of that. Like, you know, like a father. It's like a very proud, like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm proud of my son. So, but that wasn't the turning point of, 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 of my life and how actually ins- what inspired the book, the Unlock It book. Because the book, the, the, the book is Unlock It, but the subtitle is key. It's the master key to success, wealth, and significance. Yes. So I was living a life of success, but I wasn't living a life of significance. So the turning point was, I, this is the spiritual side. Mm-hmm. It is, uh, you can see it's a sign. I don't, I, don't I don't know if it's even a sign. It's, okay, so one morning I was waking up. Mm-hmm. Jenny, my, my wife, yeah. I was about 30 years old. I woke up in the morning. Now, Michael, I never get depressed. Just so you know, I don't get depressed. That's, my, that's not my personality. Even when I was having getting bullied and all that stuff, I don't get depressed. You, I, I call you a scrapper. Instead of getting <laughs> depressed, you turn that energy into let's do something about this. Let's do something. Yeah, I'm always like resourceful. Like look at the bright, like the the, full, the cup is it's, it's, it's half full. It's not half empty for yeah. me. Right? So 30 years old, one day I woke up in the morning. Tears were, I, and again, I don't cry that much. Now I cry a lot. I don't know why, but back then <laughs> I don't cry. Hard. You're, you're yeah, open hearted. You're open hearted now. I, I, I watch like a, like a comedy. I cry. I don't <laughs> even know why. It's, it's crazy. Anyway, so 30 years old, I woke up in the morning. I was crying. Now my, my, my wife, Jenny, was like, what, what's, what's going on? Like, are, are you sick? Are you not feeling? Are you having, like, what? Like, she's worried, right? Like, what's happened? Are you, are you feeling not well? And I said, I don't know. I just have these tears coming down my cheek I, uncontrollably, like crazy, crazy. Like, and my mom, like, like my mom, my wife, they, they, they've seen me cry maybe a couple of times in my, like a, t- a few, like I rarely cry before that, right? Yeah. So like always like tough, type A personality, what it takes, like let's do it. Like it's, it's always that, right? And my wife was like, what the heck is going on? I said, I don't know. Do I need to take you to the hospital? I said, no. Like, what's happening? They got to tell me, right? Dan, what's happening? I said, I have this, almost like the depression. Like, it's this void. I don't know. It's like a black hole mm-hmm. that just took over me. It's very weird. I don't know how to describe it. I've only experienced one time in my life. It's, it's very weird. We could call it an existential dilemma. Yes, I think that's that's a great term. I think yes, it's this. I don't know what it is, right? And and I thought, how? Why? why? So I, I sat down and I asked myself, why am I, why am I feeling this way? Because it drives me crazy. Why am I feeling this way? Why do I have no control over this emotion? And I sat down and I thought very very deeply about what is going on. And then that's when I went on to the kind of a spiritual journey i hate to sound so cliche but trying to find myself mm-hmm. try, trying to discover who i am and, and what i'm about like i don't know like at 30 years old that's and then that's when i went very in depth into a lot of spiritual work a lot of personal self uh, development work a lot of uh, religious work right because before that i was studying all the business stuff right but now it's like no i i got that already Right, but I, I want to learn more about myself. And I was trying to find like the meaning for life, like um, what's what's the meaning? What's the, why am I here? The purpose and and all these things. What I realized was this: that ten years I was blinded by success because I thought that's what would make me happy. Mm-hmm. The saddest thing is when you have a goal and you think this is it. When I get there, I'll be happy, Michael. As you know. When you do get there and you find out, oh, shit, I'm actually not happy. Now what? Yeah. Right? Because you thought that's it. This, like, if I get this is it. Right? If I drive that car, that's it. 
if I, I get that thing, if I go on the vacation, this is it. This is, I'm done, right? But when I got there, it's not it. Then what is it? That's when I learned that life is not about that. It is more to it. And I had to go through that to learn that. But that was not it. That's when I shift from success or significance that in life, when you transition from me, 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 yeah. to more, to it's what, what is your impact? When you focus on growth, contribution, and others, that's the fulfillment. I was, so it's like kind of what Tony Robbins talks about. I was running on the track of achievement, trying to win the game of fulfillment. That, that, that did not work. That's a disaster, right? So I want to dive into the money side of things. But before we do that, what's your mission now? To help a billion people to become a better version of themselves. Woohoo! <laughs> and that's what the whole book is about. That's what everything I do is about. People say, oh, do I teach business? Do I teach sales? Those are vehicles that I teach. But you, you actually talk to any, any, every single one of my students. Actually, people learn from me, not just follow me on social media. People learn from me. They would say, my message, everything I teach is about one thing and one thing only, to become a better version of yourself, period. Whatever it means for them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's shift gears from there and let's talk about becoming a better version of ourselves through the money game. A lot of people, yeah. in fact, ah, let's go there. Before we go into the great debt lie, why shouldn't we be embarrassed about making and talking about money? Because money, it's like people say, oh, money's not that important. Or money, money's not everything. I'll be the first, money's not everything, but it's important in, in our day-to-day -day life, right? And it's very difficult to not focus on it when, you, when you're lacking abundance, right? I always say you cannot, you cannot give coming... From a, from a place of lack, you can only give coming from a place of abundance. The only people who forget about, me, about money are the people who have money. It's very difficult. Like back then, if I, I can't I can, I can, I can buy groceries, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, I, like the, my light would be shut off, right? I would be kicked out by the landlord. It's very difficult to think about how can I help other people. I was trying to just survive, right? But when you can get that out of the way, when you can get kind of money out of the way, now you're like, okay, I, I, I have plenty. Like, I, 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 I have a lot. I have more than, than enough. Then that's when you can make the shift and say, hey, what could I do? And it's not just donation. I'm talking about what can I do with my gift, my talent, my, my, just myself? How can I give more, right? But funny thing is with money, money is, is something that when you don't need it, it comes to you. <laughs> when you're not chasing it, it comes to you. When you're not desperate for it, it comes to you, right? So that's what I'm talking about. That don't be afraid to talk about it. It's, 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 we live on this planet. It's part of our life. We don't need to shy away from it. It's nothing. It's, it's a tool. It's like, it, it's, it's like a gun. You can use it to, to shoot people, to hurt people, or you can use it to protect. It all depends on how you, how you use it. And, and I think our society, we have such a, a negative association. I mean, example, right? Michael, you know, you, we, growing up, like, what are some of the negative beliefs that we have when it comes to money, right? Well, money what? is the root of all evil. If it's somebody's bottom. rich, then they yes. must have gotten it by negative means. Yes. Right? Like, it's all negative. Yeah. You don't think about, oh, you know what? Money is what built that library. Yeah. Money is what built that hospital. Right? Money is what be able to help, you know, develop this cure. People don't think about that. Right? And if you are, doesn't matter who you are. And people say, oh, but I don't, I don't want to make more money. Money's going to change who I am. It's going to make me less spiritual. Bingo. I say, why not both? Why not be spiritual and also be wealthy? Like, it, to me, people talk about, oh, I, I, no, I'm spiritually abundant. But if you're truly abundant, shouldn't you be, you be abundant in all areas of your life? And I look, right? at, I look at money as energy. And so if you're spiritual, if you're at a high vibration, why not attract that in? And then you have one heck of a lever to help yes. move the world. Yes. And then, and then, and then it's like, yeah, it's also your health. 
right? Health, wealth, right? Your mind, your emotion, your everything. Why not? Why like why not have all? Why not just focus on on one? Because most people are actually they say they're spiritual, but they're not. They are using spirituality as a as an escape. You're right. Not to face reality. That's the truth. Right? Oh yeah, I'm spiritual. So I don't need to worry about this stuff. What you're saying is you're afraid. You're not living on your potential. You're not willing to do what it takes. You're, you're afraid. Because here's, here's the deal, right? People stay in their comfort zone. And they say they use this shield, spirituality, this shield. And say, I say, okay, so you, you're a good person? I said, yes. You want to help people? Yeah. Are you sure you want to help people? Oh, yeah, I want to help people. I said, you don't. And they're always like a little bit offended. What do you mean? I, I want to help people. What do you mean I don't want to help people? I don't think you want to help people. No, no, I want to help people. But I said the desire for you to help people, the minute it, it requests you, it requires you, it demands you to go outside the comfort zone, you say no. You would rather be in your little bubble versus, you know what, if you need to help more people, guess what? You're going to get criticized. You're going to get haters. It's going to demand you to sacrifice your time so you can impact more people, so you can accumulate more resources. You're not willing to do any of these things. So you're not really willing to sacrifice that much of yourself to help others because you put yourself first. And that's why you say, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Then you don't really want to help. You say you want to help. Looks good, but you don't. Because the ones who want to help, they're out there doing stuff. They're not talking stuff. I call it the two-step dance because people will come to me and they'll say, I'm very spiritual. Why isn't the money coming to me? I pray. I do the law of attraction. I do this. I do that. And I'll say, but you get the step forward. You have to take that step. And what you're talking about, what I'm talking about, is a lot of steps. Yes. A, a lot. Like it's the law of attraction, but as you and I know, it's, it's only one of the laws. Yeah. Right. It's, it's like there are like 50, 60, 100 of these laws, universal law of success, but that's just one of them. But people think, oh, this is it because it sounds the easiest. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Thoughts are things. Okay. I get it. What you, what you focus on expands. Yeah. That's like, it's like you want to run a marathon. That's the shoelace. <laughs> that's not even the whole shoes. That's the shoelace. Yeah. Right. Let's open the door. Let's start running. Right. Um, so that's what I'm talking about. So, I mean, I truly, I believe in law of attraction. I use law of attraction every day in my life. I just don't just like talk about it or that I just, I, I'm a pra I practice it, right? Yeah. I practice it and, and use it like for real, not just, oh, you know, it's like I just sit here and, and meditate and, and things will fall in my lap. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Right? So, so let's go from there. You talked earlier about money being a gun. It's how you use it. Mm -hmm. I want to talk with another gun that we take to that we typically take out, or at least when I say we, before yeah. we become prosperous, we have this completely backwards. What's the great debt lie? The great debt lie is this. So I want you to in anyone that's watching or anyone that's listening, right? Now, as you, in uh, the statistics I was reading the other day, uh, in America, okay, uh, more than uh, more than half. Half, more than 50% of the, the population in America, they don't, they, they, they're one paycheck away from poverty. One paycheck. They have less than $500 in their bank account, meaning if there's any emergency that happens, they, they have less than $500 cash in their account. It's, it's, it's staggering, the number. Now, look at it from a different perspective. The debt, the debt that people have, right? Credit card, student loan. Uh, your mortgage and all these debt that they have. And I want you to imagine, so if you're listening to this, think of the income that you have now, whatever the amount is. Yeah. Okay, whatever the amount you're making right now, just mentally think about that. And I want you to think about the debt that you have. Okay, now it could be 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, whatever the amount is. Okay, how much you make, how much you owe. Now I want you to kind of look at the number and think, even if you don't spend a dollar that you make and you pay, you try to use 100% of it. You don't eat, you don't, you don't live in a house, nothing. You 100% of that, use that to pay off the debt, trying to pay that off. How long would it take for you to pay off that debt? For most people, it is a long 
long, long time. For some, it could be all six months, one year. I've seen 20 years, 30 years to pay that off. I said, that's the lie. And yet most financial experts, what are they saying? Michael, they're saying, hey, don't, don't drink that coffee in the morning. Save the $3. Don't go to Starbucks, right? Like, don't, don't, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. And I'm like, that doesn't solve the problem. Uh, uh, like, if you owe $100,000, you're making three k. That doesn't, I don't care what coffee you don't drink. It, I don't care. It doesn't, like, you know what I mean? The problem is too great. So most people, they don't have a debt problem. They have an income problem. So look at it from a different scenario. Let's say you're making $5,000 yeah. a month. What if you could double, triple your income? How much faster you could pay off that debt? Much faster. And that's how I pay off my debt. In the beginning, when I was 150 k in debt, at a year, all my business failures accumulate 150 k in debt. It's dumb, stupid. But I wasn't focusing on like, saving pennies. I was focusing on increasing my income. And if at the end of the day, what I'm saying is you don't have a debt problem, you have an income problem. You don't even have an income problem. You have a skill problem. We're transitioning from a job economy to a skill economy. Mm -hmm. To earn more income, you need to improve your skill sets. As you can improve your skill sets, you can deliver more value to the marketplace. You can earn more money. That's how you pay off the debt. You don't pay off the debt by, by shrinking, by like trying to scrap some penny key, clipping coupons. You, did, you pay off the debt by learning how to deliver more value, solving more problems, impacting more people. That's it's exactly how it works, right? That's a law of compensation. So let's, let's dive into that law of compensation for a minute because that is so important because you have four debt lies. You can save your way out of debt, become your own boss. That's a huge one. You can control yes. your wealth, invest in stocks, and work harder. But that doesn't get at the V word that you just yeah. mentioned, which is so critically important. Yeah. And the, the law of compensation, it's money earned as a byproduct of, of value creation. So the more people you, you, you help, the more people you serve, then the more money you make. Like, I would, you, look at any, look, you look at anyone, pretty much either it's through uh, scale mm -hmm. or what I call transaction size. So either it's, it's, it's margin or volume, yep. right? So what it means is this. You look at anyone that's, that's let's say look at anyone that's making millions of dollars. Chances are they're selling something for millions of dollars or they are serving millions of people. Mm -hmm. You look at any, any companies that's making billions of dollars, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, billions of people. It's, it's, it's like billions of transactions, right? It's, it's exactly how it works. When you understand that, then it's like, okay, this, the money thing is really about, it goes back to what I was sharing. It's all really about looking at what other people's needs are what needs are not being fulfilled, and, and what can you do? It's not just about, oh, I can just sit and pray and money would, no. It has nothing to do with that. You need that as a first step, but it's not about that. Money, it's just, a, it's, it's, it's an amplifier. It reviews who you are. Money is a tool. Money is an energy, yeah. 100%, right? Uh, money is a thought. Money is a thought as well. So it's nothing spiritual. Money is not what's in the pocket. It's, it's not a piece of paper. It's not what it is. All. Not, you can see, is, is it those digits in your bank account? It's not what it is. It's, it's, that's that's man-made printed paper. That's paper. That's all it is. What money is always, it's value and val money exchange. Well, that gets to Zhuang Qian. That's right. That's right. So, so it's like the, uh, in Chinese term, we have a term called zhuan qian, right? It, it means to, to make money. We talk about how to make money, but in Chinese, it's also uh, it's the same idea of meaning to circulate money. Mm -hmm. To circulate money. Like when the economy is bad, right? Let's say well, there's an economic downturn. The government tells you to what? Go out there. You want to help the economy? Spend. Spend. That's what you need to do. So to, for money, you need to make it circulate, not just hold on to it like, oh, this is like, ooh, no, just spend. Not buy stupid things, but circulate. Put it back in your business. Hire people. 
make investments, do something, make it, make it circular, right? And that's accumulate more and more and more. It's a very philosophical way of looking at it, yeah. but that's really how, how money works. Well, literally, circulation is to flow, and it has it's the word flow. circle in it. It has to go out in order, in order for, for it to come. That's exactly how it is. So if somebody is stuck in fear, they're in a fear-based play, place. They're listening to this and they're going, but wait, my debt is way up. He's saying it's not about just simply becoming an entrepreneur. It's not about not getting the cup of coffee. And he's saying, I don't know, uh, I don't know anything about high-income skills. Mm. How does somebody start? It sounds overwhelming. Mm. And it's always overwhelming. So it doesn't matter if, you, if let's say you are, you are stuck at a job right now, yeah. okay? Or maybe you have, you're running a small little business or, or you're doing something, you have a career that you're pursuing. Either way, what I strongly believe in what's in the book, uh, in the book Unlock It is the job economy is dead. Yeah. The job economy is back then in industrial age where you go to school, you get good grades, you, then you hopefully find a company, you work for that company, right? Now, I mean, Michael, how many, how many times people tra- change career? All the time. And, and doubling back, and, and, and you talk about this, I talk about it as well. I wrote a book for college students, and I was talking about, to the students about college may not be right for you, because mm. it is typically a great way to get in debt, but mm. it's not going to teach you the skills to get ahead today. Yes, and plus that the jobs that you think you're preparing for, those jobs may not exist by the time you graduate. Yeah. So you are getting into debt for a piece of paper that you may never use. Even the people who have degrees, these students who, who have degrees, they know how many people later on get a job that has absolutely nothing to do with what they study back in school, right? That'd be me. So, <laughs> all right? So, so that model to me, like I'm very passionate, but that's why only I have a global education company because that model is dead. Like to, to spend four years of life studying something that you may never use, that the, 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 the industry may not even be around, what's the point? Versus the, the skill economy, which now the difference, oh, because I want to explain this, because people Please sometimes do. get... So first of all, let's define high-income skill first. I define high-income skill as a skill set that can make you a minimum of $10,000 per month. Six-figure income. Mm-hmm. That's high income. There's a big difference between high-income skill and high-income job. So let me explain. Let's say a high income job is something that you are dictated by who you work for, the company, your supervisor, your manager, your boss, how much you make. They say, okay, you make, you make $20 an hour. That's it. Oh, I want to make $25. No, you make $20. Maybe, you know, if you do well in two years, we'll review and you make $21, $21, $21 an hour, right? You're dictated by someone how much you can make. Even your high income, doesn't matter. The minute you have a high income job, you switch to another company, chances are that may not, your income may not stay the same. That's a high income job. High income skill, on the other hand, you're, you're, the only thing that dictates how much you earn is the marketplace. That's the only factor. So you're making, let's say you are hypothetically, you, you run a digital marketing agency yeah. and you charge clients. 5000 a month to help them do marketing and branding and, and traffic and all that. Okay, 5000 a month. Great. Later on, you meet another client and you now provide more value. You're more skillful at what you do. And now instead of charging 5000 10000 mm-hmm. you double your price. Is it possible to double your price? Well, yeah. Yeah, as long as you have someone who's willing to pay for it. That's a high-income skill. You're, the, the only thing that determines how much you get paid your value is the marketplace. And the marketplace is always very fair. That's the great thing about the marketplace, right? So high-income skill you can something that you can stack. You can stack on your skill. A job you cannot. A job is linear. This is not linear. So a high-income skill allows people to go out there and they could earn more income without going through four years. Of, of, of education. I'm not, and I'm not saying if you want to be a doctor, lawyer, attorney, absolutely. Yeah. Like, like we, 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 you need that 100%. We, we cannot argue. But I'm saying what if you don't want to do those things? 
that you want to look for other career. They, it, like, there's no, right, Michael, what if someone, I was talking to a friend of mine, mm -hmm. her daughter, I said, so what do you want to do when you grow up? Young daughter, I want to be a YouTuber. I said, what? Yeah, I want to be a YouTuber. She was like 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Well, but this, in school, there's no YouTube 101. <laughs> No, and they're influencers. I'll put that in quotes. Influencers making a killing at yeah. just about her age. Yeah, like there's no, there's no, there's no YouTube one. But she's like, no, I don't need that. I, I'm, and, and when I was talking to her, I'm on YouTube. I mean, she knows her stuff. She's like, I study all these people. Mm -hmm. I, I follow all these. I know how they make videos. And she said, I'm going to get this kind of camera. Yeah. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this type of topic. I'm going to write this kind of skit. I mean, this is, this is brilliant. This is awesome. So, but the school is like, oh, that's, that's not a, that's not a real job. That's, that's, that's like, nah, that doesn't, you know what I mean? They, 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 they downplay all these things. What if a kid, you know, before we talk about video games, oh, that's no, that's, that's like for losers. Do you know how many streamers and gamers are making a great living doing that? Right? So it, before it wasn't a career, now it's like, believe me, it is a career done right, right? But the school system's like, no, nope, there's no video game 101, right? There's no YouTube 101. There's no makeup blog 101. But I think we should give kids, young people, more, more options. And that's what I strive to do. I want to give them a different perspective. Hey, you know what? You want to pursue that? That's your passion and, and that's what you want to do? You don't have to be restricted by certain, like, certain restrictions. What, what society, it's, it's, it's kind of pushing down on us, right? I think it's Einstein. Yeah, Einstein said, education is what, you, is what begins when your schooling ends. And yes. so she hasn't been schooled to the fact that she's lost her dreams yet, which is awesome. Yeah. How do yeah. we help people who have been so schooled that they're now in the, it used to be a nine to five. Now it's an eight to six, eight to seven, or a 24-hour grind because you've got to carry your smartphone so that the boss can get a hold of you at any time. <laughs> Yeah. How do you say, I want to step out of this and create value and I have to find something? I mean, for Dan, for yourself, it's making money and now it's significance. For yeah. myself, it's raising the vibration of the planet and I'm on fire and I live a very admittedly unbalanced life like yourself mm. because I am a creator. Yeah. How do we help people find that fire again? It's the, the high income skill and uh, Michael, you know the biggest challenge, the biggest challenge with what I do, the biggest challenge with anybody, because I, I cannot create change within the system. I'm creating change outside of the system. Right. Right. And the system, the, the, first of all, if you study history, where the school system came from, actually it came from the revolution, the industrial age, because the factories, they need workers. Yeah. And they don't have enough work. If you study actually history of education, that's what it, that's so that's where it came about, right? They want to be able to to create a kind of like assembly line to create workers so they could work in factory jobs. That's what the whole system came about, right? So the school system, the society, they they have done such a phenomenal job. Just think of just just think about just think about. It. Here's their sales pitch. Just let's think about this. Here's the sales pitch. Okay, you're going to spend four years of your life, mm -hmm. work very hard, and you're going to get a piece of paper, and you're going to get into debt. You don't have money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to loan you money. You're going to get into not five, ten thousand, 10000 probably $50,000, $100,000 in debt. Depends on what you study. And afterwards, you may, may not, no guarantee you're going to get a job, by the way. No guarantee you're going to do anything. But, but I'm going to give you a piece of paper. And then you're on your own. And you're going to spend the next five, 10 years pay off the debt that you owe. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. Sign me up. Right? Dan, I'll give you oh, one yeah. even better. You're going to take 18 to 23 years of your life, maybe longer, to learn something while going into debt that you yeah. may or may not do, but you will have traded away a quarter to a third of your life Yes. Doing something you don't enjoy so that you can work for somebody to help them achieve their dreams rather than yours. Yes. And they're like, okay, that's, that makes sense. Send me up. Oh, not only it makes it, the parents are saying, you do that. 
you must do that. Oh, but dad, I don't want to do that. No, 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 no. What, what do you mean? We sacrifice so much. You go to school. You get, you get your degree. Better yet, you get your, your the MBA. Even better, right? So here's a little different scenario. Yeah. I, my, let's say my online training. I take people through a seven-week program. Let's say I teach them high-income skill. I teach them, let's say, closing on the phone. That's the skill that I teach my students, right? Students from all over the world. It's a seven-week program. It's $2,500. $2,500 seven week, and I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of success stories. Hundreds. From like my youngest student, 14 years old. Cool. To the oldest, like 70 years old. From all walks of life, from 150 countries, right? Here's the thing. 100K in debt, normal. $2,500 seven week course, it's a scam. Which one is a scam? But people have been so brainwashed by, no, that's the way to do it. Anything outside of that, that is no, that it's not legit. It cannot be true. Just it's like they, they've been like brainwashed so much that they don't see any other way. That's the biggest challenge. I'm so glad you brought that up because that doubles us all the way back to money is the root of all evil. I'm yep. looking at Dan Locke. His program must be a scam. Look at him. He's trying to put on an act. Yeah, it must be a scam. Like, no, no way you can learn something with $2,500 and make money with it. There's no way. It's impossible. No way you can learn something for seven weeks because it's supposed to be four years. There's no way you can like, learn for in seven weeks and then get any kind of results. This year, uh, the, the time this interview, uh, September, I'm doing my huge event mm -hmm. called Closest in Black, where, where like, students from all over the world, they come, over 1,000 people, probably 1,500 people, they come. This year, we, Michael, we're giving away 230 awards. Students who have done 10K, 50K, 100K, six-figure earner, seven-figure earner, 230 awards. I could produce 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 awards. People would still be, no, that cannot be done. That's not a legitimate career. That's not a real career, right? No, four years in debt, college, that's the way to go. But you have people who actually, who are more, who, who are awake. Who are awake, really? It's like the Matrix, right? Who are awake, who are not plugging the system? They'll be like, "No, this is dumb. There's other way." And it doesn't have to be me, by the way. You can learn from a lot of other people, right? But I'm saying that you can you can look for alternative education that actually can get you there faster, mm -hmm. without you getting into debt, right? Without a lot of these things that you have to go through. There are alternatives. That's my message. That's 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 the, my main message, right? And when you understand that, you can choose. You can choose. How important is it that we start to find that one thing that resonates with our heart? You might not find it overnight. It might take you a little bit of time. It took me a long time. It took me a long time. It might take you a bit of time. But if you want it bad enough mm -hmm. and you're willing to kind of go against the, the but nowadays it's 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 now working a little bit you mean you see it on news all the time people know that the you know the whole um university scandal right the whole oh, college yeah. student. and then people talk about oh the student debt and like people now a lot of they look at i don't want to talk politics but you know the whole a lot of that Mm, awareness, people are more aware. No, like they, 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 like now they can see there's something wrong with this system here, right? Yes. People are now getting smarter. Like maybe that's not such a good idea. Maybe, now they don't know the solution yet, but they know it's like it's like smoking, right? Before it was cool in the eighties, but now it's like no, actually maybe it's not so good. Right? Now people are like no, you know this kills you, right? I think it's that way at that awareness phase, and, and that I'm happy, very happy to see that. Uh, more people would find their, their gifts, their callings. But knowing that I think life is not about finding yourself. Mm -hmm. life, life is about creating yourself. That you could create the life that you want. Uh, you might not find it overnight. I didn't find it overnight. But as you do, as you do more and take more action, it would, it would appear.
And then when you found, it's like relationship. When you date, you don't know if this is the, the right person. This is going to be your, your soulmate. This is the person that you're going to spend the rest of life with. But when you find a person, you would know. Yeah. Right? Michael, when you find Jessica, you know. Yeah. When right? you found Jetty, you knew. Yeah. Yeah, you knew. You just like you, you, but you can't predict and say, "Oh, that's going to be that one, or he's going to be that one, she's going to be." But when you found the right person, then you know what, you know, it's the same thing. Are there daily habits that you're doing, or that you would teach other people to do, that those who are successful do, that those who aren't successful don't? My my ritual, my kind of morning morning ritual is very simple. Yeah. People talk about this, right? Morning ritual, what it is. I, I do very simple things in the morning. Uh, in the morning, I always start off with my, you can see on YouTube, the, the guided meditation, mm -hmm. which is the attitude gratitude. I always start the day with that. It takes you 10, 12 minutes. In the morning, it's a piece of music, my own voice, guided meditation of what am I grateful for? Who am I grateful for to have in my life? I want to start the day with gratitude. Out of curiosity, at the end, would you have the time to take us through two or three minutes of that? Maybe we can even better yet. I can include a link. Um, I should have a new version of it. Might not just give it to your to to all your listener. Like so, so I do that every morning, every morning. Because then what you what I focus on, what's good in my life, right? And that attracts more goods, right? That's number one. Uh, I do some kind of some form of stretching, yoga, yeah. something in always because I want to get my blood flowing. I want to stretch. I want to. Get, like in my mind aware like that's second thing third thing then i look at because of my schedule i look at what i need to focus on like what are some of the important five six things i need to accomplish that day mm -hmm. what are some of the responsibility right uh, i don't want to what you don't want to do is in the morning open up your email box and log on to facebook and do all that i Thank always say you. email box yeah what is email box here's what's email box email box is other people's agenda <laughs> yes and okay. other people's energy there's the e for yeah, yeah. energy it's just not yours yeah, like, yeah, it's like you open you open this like oh, the evil box. Suddenly you're pulling a hundred different directions, right? You're putting. Did, did you call it evil it. box there? Not evil <laughs> box, <laughs> inbox. But it is other people's agenda, right? Uh, so that's not your morning should be spent on your most important and productive task, right? And that's that's really what I focus on. It's very very simple. Mm -hmm. Added gratitude, some kind of some form of exercise. And then some light things are not like not heavy lifting, just simple. And then also, what are the key five, six things you need to focus on for that day that you want to accomplish? Do you have any manifestation work or anything that you do to write down so you know where you're going or where where you want to go in life? Oh yes, I have my vision board. Yeah, uh, but I don't do a vision board like most people do. Most people do the vision board wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I could spend a lot of time on it, but most people they, they do it wrong because uh, they use the vision board as an inspiration board, mm -hmm. meaning they put motivational quote, they put uh, things, images that they think is my vision. No, no that's a, put that on your inspiration board. Yep. Your vision board is things that you want to accomplish, meaning that I can walk into your home, your office, I point to the vision board, I can ask, have you done that? Is it done? If you cannot, like, if you see a quote, or you see, like, what does that mean? It, yeah. it, doesn't, so it doesn't mean, like, it, it creates confusion. So I have a vision board that I use. I have very, very clear idea what, what things I want to accomplish. Uh, I used to have a lot more things on my vision board. Mm -hmm. Like, I would have a lot of things I want to get. Now I have actually very, a lot fewer. I have, like, three, four items on my vision board. Uh, and those are big, big items. Big items, right? So depends on where you're at. But a vision board is something that, that I use. Um, that I manifest through that. So it's in my office. I look at it every single day, right? Every single day. And, and that has worked for me like very well over the years. What's one of the things you want to get? One of the things is for um, the book, yeah. right? For also the book to be in all the uh, bookstore and all the uh, major um, airport. Beautiful. Right, that's part of the how we impact more people to get the message out there. So that's one item on my vision board for now, like in the next like six months. So perfect segue. Where can people go to find out more and to find your book? Unlock it. Uh, easy. www.unlockit. L O C K. Unlockitbook. dot com, or they can also go to Amazon and get it as well. It's coming out in a month or two. 
fantastic. If you didn't catch unlockitbook.com, come on over to inspirenationshow.com. We'll get you over to unlockitbook.com. Just a few little quick wrap-up questions. First off, what's your fascination with Iron Man? Uh, because I think that's the first uh, movie that I watch. I've always been a huge fan of Batman, yeah. but it's the first like kind of superhero. It's the funny, Michael. The superhero I resonate towards too. Yeah. It's always the one that doesn't have superpower. I, I like they're just normal people, but with like very smart, right? Very intelligent. Yeah. So Batman, Iron Man, and so I'm a huge. I don't. I have like three, three full size Iron Man here. Can you, can you do it? Can you do a quick zoom? Can you just turn the camera? Is it okay? This would be awesome. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see how much there? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> very, very cool. And as a car nut myself, who's now transferred over to uh, uh, electric cars, what's the car hiding back there? That is actually my. I bought this car recently. It's my first car, same model. The very first car that I have. Yeah. It's a Ford Escort. Why I bought that car? Because that was the first car that I bought for twenty five hundred dollars. It taught me. It reminds me where I came from. That and the license plate is L O K. First, my first car. Awesome, and that gets us to maybe the most important lesson or theme for today: gratitude. Yes. When when you are grateful, you will not be fearful. When you're grateful, you will not be stressful. When you're grateful, fear and, gr and gratitude, they don't coexist in a human mind. Woohoo! This has been phenomenal, Dan. Any last words of wisdom you want to share with people today? It is nice if you see Michael's work. It's nice you, if you follow me on social media that you get inspired, you get motivated. All that is good. But I hope that when you listen to the show, when you watch, watch us on social media, that you don't just watch. You're not going to watch and get to where we are, but use that ins inspiration to take the step. Don't just watch and say, oh, that's cool. That's nice. Uh, I'm motivated. That's not good enough. That You need to take action. So I hope it inspires you to take some kind of action. Maybe just in the morning. I'm going to start the morning with attitude gratitude. Right? I'm going to go learn the high income skill. I I'm going to go read that book. I'm going to go meet that person. Whatever it is, just take that like step. Don't just use it as entertainment and inf information. That's, that's not going to change your life. But if you use it to take action and turn it into implementation, that's, that's, I think that's my goal for you. Woohoo! I think uh, there's a mantra that I've gotten from your book today and from our interview as well, um, mm -hmm. that if people repeat this mantra, I don't think they can help but be more successful in their lives and in the lives of others. How can I bring more value to others? How can I bring more value to others? How can I bring more value to others? Yes, and then you don't just get, you, you get success, you get fulfillment, you get deep joy, you, you get impact, you get, you get it all. You get it all, 100%. Awesome. I can't thank you enough. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you on the show, Dan, today. This has been phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Michael. And say hi for Jessica for me, okay? And to Jenny for me as well. So for Thanks. everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get unlock it, and begin unlocking your wealth and future success today. And shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs> Awesome. You are an Iron Man, Dan. I love it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Seriously, appreciate it. I appreciate it. Make sure, yeah, make sure you get this message to Jessica. I want to say hi. All right. That's yeah, awesome. And I appreciate the support. I had a fantastic money-making time with Dan Locke. To find out more about creating wealth and success in your life, click here, subscribe below.